who is that? And finally, a more educated person than myself, was like, well, that's Beyonce. So I owned a film car company in New York City, and we started that in like 2003. And we provided vehicles for movies, photo shoots, editorial, anything you needed a car for. And it was pretty, it was a pretty good job in New York because the culture there wasn't a car culture. You could always find a car in LA, but you can't always find a car in New York. You know, you never knew what the, was going to happen when the phone rang, which was the best part of the job. And it was always a different job. So we got a call from uh, this video production company to do a music video. They want to do it in three locations in Manhattan, in the West Side, in Tudor City, and up in Harlem. And so we'd have three teams and three sets of cars, and we're like, oh, that's a good day for us. So the, the music video we were going to do was Lost One for Jay-Z. The first setup was going to be in the West Village, and he wanted the Maybach, the Maybach Coupe, the Accelero. And uh, there was only one of those, and it was in Germany. And we're like, sure, no problem, we'll get you one of those. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll make some calls. That car, they only made one. It was made, uh, I think, for Fulda to help promote their carrot tire or something like that. It was an extraordinarily enormous and strange coupe, but fantastic looking, you know, it had a lot of punch. So we made some calls and we had it shipped over from Germany by plane. And uh, they brought that in. We set that up in the West Village. So the Maybach flight was on Mercedes. We, we work with the manufacturers a lot and the, uh, we actually represented Triumph Motorcycles. We had like 15 of those in Brooklyn and they would give those to us for free as long as we would put them in shoots. So if you called up a manufacturer, you had a decent relationship with them. And they didn't have the schedule, you know, it, wasn't, it was an outlandish request, they would send you a car. When we called Bugatti to try to get a Bugatti for Tom Cruise, they were, there were only three in the United States and they were going to get us one. That, of course, fell through. But we worked with a lot of manufacturers, uh, General Motors, Toyota. And even if it was something weird, they want to get it in front of people. Like, it's good for Mercedes to have a Maybach being rolled by Jay-Z, who at that time was the hottest thing. And uh, they were like, yeah, we can fly that over. And I'm sure it really didn't cost them all that much and that much time. And we took care of all the logistics of it. You know, the car was interesting. I mean, everybody was really hot for it. It was a, it, Sculpturally, it was beautiful. Um, but if you were a car guy and you started looking at it, you could tear it apart. Like, things didn't fit. It was a little weird. There was a... I'm trying to remember. There was... In the back seat, there was a hump. And we were trying to figure out what it was for. And even the guys, the handlers, the Mercedes handlers... They were, they were like, oh, I don't know. So we went in there. We were just pushing buttons and messing with it when there were people were away. And it popped open, and it was a helmet holder, like, built into this thing. And it's this massive GT coupe. But the pretension of, like, having a helmet in it seemed insanely strange. But, you know, when you build a custom car like that, why not? Let's build helmet holders in there for somebody. That's the only thing I remember that uh, I thought was strange. And I... Of course, I'm just assuming it was a helmet holder. You know, maybe it was for the orb of light from the planet Xenon. I mean, who, who knows with the weird stuff that the designers build. But it was just an immensely long and low. Oh, we had huge issues with the height of it, too. It was really, really low. Uh, but that was for looks, you know. And it had 23-inch wheels, you know. Because why not? Let's have a wagon wheel on the side of our Mercedes. So according to the Mercedes engineers, and I'm sure this never happened, uh, the top speed was 218 miles an hour. And I'm sure it did 218 miles an hour when it was on the jet coming over from Germany, but I doubt that thing ever went over 50. It shook itself apart. And it was later sold, I think in 2011, to Birdman for like $8 million. And to have a partially functioning car for $8 million, it makes sense to me, but I'm sure... You know, he parked it amongst his collection and he'd walk in and be like, that's the only Maybach coupe in existence. It's worth $8 million. And then in Harlem, it was uh, like an ambulance and some cop cars because there was going to be a shooting on a stoop, which the locals weren't all so happy about. And then in Tudor City, there was uh, a bunch of Mercedes S-classes and big black cars. So, oh, and it was a Bentley, too, there somewhere. 
so we got going at noon and they wanted all the cars in place in all three locations. And we're like, okay, but how's Jay-Z going to be in three places at once? And they're like, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'm like, all right. And we are signed up for a 10 hour day. And I'm like, all right. I go, anything over that is double overtime. And they're like, no problem. They sign the contract, pay paid up front. So we do the shoot. The, the Maybach coupe goes super smooth and it's awesome and it rolls out. It barely runs, by the way. It is the biggest piece of junk you've ever seen. They can't get it started. Half the lights don't work. So they had to fake most of it. And it's a show car. So that's just supposed to sit there and look pretty anyway. Then I went to Tudor City to get the Mercedes ready. And we had gotten a bunch of brand new S classes. And the shoot part, that part of the shoot was he's supposed to roll up in the S class and him and a lady go inside. And then the next morning he rolls out alone. And that's pretty much all over what we had to do. So we go there and we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting. And I'm getting phone calls from Harlem that he's up there shooting that. And the locals are getting really hot because the last thing they really want is another video showing Harlem neighborhoods being violent and things happening. And some of our guys had some issues with, with the locals and the, the, uh, the great cinema police that they have in New York. So if you're a cop for like 20 years, you can finally decide, oh, I want to be on this unit. And they have the, the, this, the cinema theater unit. And the guys just come out and they, they have snacks and they make sure the, the streets shut down. And they're, they're the best guys in the world. So they handled everything up there. So it was like 10 o'clock at night and our contract's up for the Mercedes and we're sitting there waiting and what do you want? And the producer's like, oh, just, just sit there and wait. We'll be, we'll be with you anytime. We're in overtime now. He's like, oh, not a problem. So while we're there in the West Village part of the shoot, there's a little bit of a hub blue and Jay-Z's girlfriend shows up. Who, I didn't know who that was. I'm not, didn't really follow that kind of thing, so. But this woman's out there, dressed very fashionably, obviously, kind of rock star looking. And she had a few people around her. You always can tell somebody who's famous because they have their people. And they're moving through the crowd. I'm like, who is that? And finally, a more educated person than myself. I was like, well, that's Beyonce. Like, oh, okay then. And she had easily more pull than Jay-Z on set. I mean, she was the famous person that was on set. She came on, and if I remember correctly, Jay-Z was up shooting in Harlem, so she hung out for a long enough time to wait for him, but it was kind of, at some point, you gotta cut bait, and she was like, and then she was gone. So 10 o'clock goes by, 11 o'clock goes by, midnight, and Jay-Z's crew rolls up. We put him in the back seat. I drive him up to the door. He gets out with the lady. And we do that two or three times. And they're like, okay. I'm like, great, are we done? He's like, no, 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 now you have to wait because we have to do the shot where he comes out. And you can shoot night for day in film, no problem. That's done, you know, you just turn up the lights and everything's fine. And that's what I thought was gonna happen, but no. They're like, just wait. And my guys are like, we, we gotta go. Sleep in the cars. So we all slept in these Mercedes S classes parked on the side of the road and Totally passed out. 6 a.m. comes and there's a crack, 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 crack at the door. And I'm like at the window going, what the? And, you know, I, I totally freaked me out. Roll the window down. The producer's like, we're ready for you. I'm like, oh, okay, let's do it. So it's him coming out. It's the daybreak shot. And uh, he comes out and hops in the car and we drive away. I'm like, that's it? I'm like, that's it. All right. You realize this is a double overtime. So essentially they, they came out and told me, they're like, yeah, we knew this all the time. We just wanted the cars in place because what have you didn't show up? I'm like, that's our job is to show up. And they're like, well, we just wanted to make sure. So the original shoot cost them, I think was like 35 grand. We charged them like almost 50 grand in overtime and they had no problem with that. I'm like, okay, anytime you need us, you give us a call. We'll get there at like six in the morning and we'll wait for 36 hours if you want. It'll work out perfectly for the both of us. The story of your dream car starts with finding it, and the best way to do that is with Autotempest.com. Autotempest allows you to compare the results from Craigslist nationally with all the top listing sites. So visit Autotempest.com today, and before long, you'll be making some amazing car stories of your very own.